here we go with another video that I'm sure is going to cause a lot of butt hurt and it's going to cause a lot of people to make comments and very uneducated comments at that as well. Um, the truth about Aikido, the real deal, Iri Minage. How effective is Iri Minage in the real world? It's extremely effective. Okay. Now, obviously, some of you guys are going to get pissed off right now because I'm going to talk for the next five minutes. I need to do this so you understand where I'm coming from. Okay, because I'm probably going to answer a lot of your questions within that time and so on through the video. Okay, you need to understand the mindset. You need to understand about how the technique works with Edi Minage. Okay, I am a byproduct of Steven Seagal, obviously. If you guys don't already know that, I am. There's been a lot of controversy about Steven Seagal lately, especially on Facebook forums. A lot of people have been, you know, speaking their opinion about him. Now, I see all the YouTube videos on him. Christian Tissier just made a video uh, talking about Steven Seagal when he was being interviewed. And, you know, it is what it is. Personally, I don't care what Seagal has done in his personal life, especially when it comes to his wife and things like that. I can read shit off the internet just as easy as you guys can. I don't care about that, okay? What I had a great deal amount of respect for him for was his methodology of Aikido. Seagal was devoted to showing the real fighting techniques of Aikido. Now there's a lot of people out there that claim, oh, Seagal's Aikido is bullshit, this, that, and whatever. Have you ever felt Seagal's Aikido? Have you ever felt Seagal's Aikido through Haruo Matsuoka Sensei, Larry Renosa, Craig Dunn, um, Jimmy Berkeley, Nick Scoggins, uh, you know, George Angulo Sensei, you know, uh, it's, there's a bunch of people that are out there. You know, several people that are out there that, you know, these, these guys were his first, second, third generation students and they're phenomenal. You know, you look at Haruo Matsuoka Sensei, he is extremely popular right now. Everybody respects the hell out of him. And if you ever listen to any of the interviews that he does and he speaks of Seagal, he never speaks ill about Seagal whatsoever. He is forever grateful for what he's learned from Seagal because that was his foundation of Aikido. If it wasn't for Seagal, would he be where he's at today? And if it wasn't for Matsuoka Sensei, would Seagal be where he's at today being a movie star? Matsuoka made him hands down. If it wasn't for Matsuoka Zukemi, especially in Above the Law and the other films that he was in, it wouldn't have been so convincing and it wouldn't have been so dynamic and entertaining and whatnot. Um, with what we're going to show you today is we're going to show you how Edi Minage really works. And yeah, it's going to fall back into the last video that I talked about in the whole against a trained fighter. Again, you're never going to face a trained fighter in the real world. Okay. Now, somebody said something about the fact of, oh, do trained fighters, uh, you're delusional if you think they don't go out and start fights. Um, well, it's kind of really interesting when you say that because a lot of you guys act like this is a fucking epidemic and that there's trained martial artists going out and beating up 15 people on the New York subway. Um, that's not happening. You're not hearing about trained fighters, you know, walking to the mall during Christmas time like an active shooter and beating the shit out of people for no reason. You don't hear about that, okay? And if it was happening on a more frequent basis, news media, you know, agencies would be covering this and they're not. Okay. Do martial artists go out and get into fights? Yeah, I'm sure they do. But the key thing is they're not the ones that are causing the fight. And yeah, I'm sure there's guys out there that are causing the fight. But you're not hearing about it. Okay? You're not. And quite frankly, who really cares anyways? Okay? What I'm doing is about self-preservation for myself and for my students. That's what I'm doing. Okay? It's not about fighting a trained fighter. It's not about, oh, will this work against that? Will this work against sparring? But I don't give a shit about any of that. This is about real world application and how this works in the real world out on the street. It's not about sport fighting. Aikido, again, is not about competition. It's not about sport fighting. It is supposedly a non-violent self-defense martial art. And you're using somebody else's energy from their attack, redirecting that and neutralizing them based off of the energy that you're getting from the, from the set attack. And there's a lot of things that you gotta take into play. The, 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 the situation, how it's going down, the circumstances, the intent behind the attack, 
you know, there's many elements that you have to take into play and you have to be able to do that within a split second to be able to make a choice whether you're going to hurt this person or you're not going to hurt this person. Okay? It's all about choice. Okay? Do I want to go out and hurt people? Absolutely not. Do I want to go out and hurt my students when I do these demonstrations? Absolutely not. But in order for you, in order for us to be real, to be able to teach you guys, there has to be honesty within the attack. Okay? We have to be real with this in a sense of the way how this methodology is taught and trained. Okay? You have to go that route. If you don't, then it's you're just like everybody else. Okay? Irimi-nage is a very effective Aikido technique. Whether you guys like it or not, it is. It's very effective on the street. 99.99% .99 of the time, they never see it coming because it's that fast. Now, doing it from the traditional standpoint, there's no way you're going to pull that off. Okay? There's no way that you're going to sit there and move into this and ten con and bring him down to the ground and come back up and throw your arm over his head and he's going to do this dynamic ukemi. That's all bullshit. Okay? The reason why I, my opinion, the reason why this never comes and makes contact with the person's neck, especially the Aikikai way, not the Iwama way, not the Christian Tissier way, but coming across the neck, and a lot of times you see people go over their head, is because they don't want to make that hard contact with this throw, because it's not a muscle throw, it's a body throw. You're throwing with your body. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you're essentially throwing that person with 230 pounds of your body moving into this. That's a huge difference. Okay? So those particular techniques from the Aikikai to traditional systems, you have to modify that to make that work. And you have to modify any technique, Aikido technique. You have to constantly make adjustments based off the situation that you're in. And if you're not doing that, and you have to do it within a split second in order for, make, for it to make it work, if you're not doing that, you're not going to be successful with your Aikido. Okay? Again, back to the trained fighter. Okay. Trained fighters, again, don't go out and start fights. I have to constantly re reiterate that so you guys out there start getting it into your head. Everybody's really brainwashed on the whole MMA thing and how this shit works. And, oh, if it doesn't work against a trained fighter, it doesn't work. I don't care if it works against a trained fighter. That's, that's not what I'm doing this for. Okay? I don't care if it works against that guy. I don't give a shit because I know that in the real world, chances of me fighting a trained fighter, an MMA fighter, or any other person that's skilled in martial arts is slim to none. The best defense is don't put it yourself in that situation in the first place. But if you're back up against the wall and you have no choice, then again, you got to make the decision whether you're going to hurt the person or not hurt the person. Okay? That's essentially very important that you understand that. You know, when you're dealing with somebody on the street and obviously here comes the person, whatever, argument starts, that person, again, doesn't know that you're skilled. He has no idea that you're skilled. He has no idea what you know. Just as the same with you. You have no idea that person's skilled. You have no idea what he knows. But the reality of this is when he attacks, whether it's a shove, shove, throws a punch, or just throws that punch, the reality of it is if you know how to evade the punch and you know how to deflect the punch, then you can move in and you can apply Edi Minage to somebody. Very fast, very effective, and a lot of power behind the throw. But the key thing is you have to do it the second that he attacks. If you hesitate, and you show any type of martial movement whatsoever to where you stand unorthodox compared to the way out somebody would normally stand, that's going to throw a red flag. And then he's not going to attack you the same way because now he's going to be thinking something's happened, that something's happening, that you have skill. There is going to be no resistance in that because he doesn't know to resist. He will never know to resist what you're going to do because it's impossible to know what you are thinking and what you are going to do within that moment of that attack. Granted, I am reiterating things that I said in the last video. Just in case you guys missed that video, you might want to go and watch that last video. It's, you know, 
the truth about Aikido, whether you like it or not. That was my last video. Now, this is the truth about Aikido, Iri Minage, and how it works, whether you like it or not. This is how effective this is. As for, for Seagal Sensei style of Aikido, hey, Ron, we do this off of a shove. <coughs> so, <coughs> typically, fights start off where somebody comes off and they shove you, and here comes the punch. Or they get in your face and they go to shove you and they want to see what's going to happen, how you're going to respond. You don't let them get to the point, just don't set up, you don't let them get to the point of here. You don't let that happen. You don't let it happen. Now the one thing that we do different from everybody else is we incorporate hand deflections, sudiage, ukunagashi, kiriage. The hand deflections, and this is what I find very interesting. Isn't Aikido based off of sword culture? Wasn't it developed off of sword culture, right? So deflecting with the sword, ukanagashi, which is the deflection, okay? Why is it that Seagal Sensei's Aikido is the only Aikido that actually uses Kenjutsu sword deflections with hand movements, emulating those exact sword deflections with a hand movement, with Taijutsu, with the Te Sabaki hand movement. Why is Seagal Sensei's Aikido the only Aikido that does that? Okay, with a hand deflection, you are living into the principles of Aiki, whether you like it or not. You are deflecting that movement. You're absorbing, masubi, you're blending with this. At the same time, you're moving in, taking Kazushi, and then here comes technique, or here comes technique, right? So if it was if it was a shove, or let's just say a punch to stomach Munetsky, so he punches Munetsky, I'm gonna grab this, right, to turn into Koltagaishi, or if he punches, again, he punches, and I move in to do Minage, and then here's Idi Minage. Come on, <laughs> let's get real here. He goes to punch again, and I come straight forward, never gonna see that happening. Now that's not a realistic punch, that's an Aikido punch, you know, that's Munetsu. So he goes and does that again, and he punches, right, right to, right to the solar plexus, and I move in, there's that punch. If the attack is committed and it's fired off, he gets thrown. So if he does Shomenuchi, right, or say Yoko Minuchi, Yoko Minuchi attack, and I move into this here, and then I move in, and here's the technique, come on. That shit doesn't work in the real world either. Who are we fucking kidding? That doesn't work. So when that shove happens with a real kata, you know, how do you, how do you move from this? This is hard to do. How do you move from this? It works really well with the spot you come in and control. You take them right away. Now here's, here's the truth here. When you do this, real nice and easy. This deflection, Right? Here's the deflection absorb. Now I'm blending. I'm blending. Strong? I'm blending. See how fast my hands are here? Push, pull back. Right? Right there. I'm already there. Guess what? Now I have Kubishimi. Notice how his chin comes up. Why does he do that? That's bullshit. Oh, that's, you know, he's giving it to him. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That doesn't work. That's bullshit. Really? Is it? Is it really bullshit? Any one of you guys, you want to come on by? This isn't a challenge. I'll show you how this works. Okay? I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not going to do it to you to where I hurt you. I'll show you the mechanics and the inner workings of these techniques and how fast these are applied and how effective they are. No matter how fast he goes to shove me, okay, it's just the flexion is right there. Okay? Again, right? Good. Harder. Harder. I'm moving in. Notice how the Ukemi is straight down to the ground. But I'm still, I'm still connecting on his neck. Now in the real world, somebody goes and shoves. They're not going to raise up their chin. But why is the reason why Rod is allowing me to do this to his neck? Because he's escaping the throw. The ukemi, he's absorbing this ukemi. He's escaping physical injury. Now granted, he's not taking a high fall right now, okay? Because I'm not going full blast on him. 
but he's escaping the potential for personal injury. If he just stands there, I'm not going to do this for real, but he just stands there and I nail him right across his neck, you know what's going to happen? That's going to fucking give him whiplash. And he's like, oh, fuck. Right? Yeah, you're hitting the Adam's apple too. You take enough blows like that, the next day you feel like you have strep throat. It sucks. Okay? I know what that feels like. I've been on the receiving end of Larry Renosa Sensei's Edi Minage. And you know what, man? Tell you what, that shit hurts. And it doesn't, it doesn't go away. It takes a good week before it goes away because he just comes straight through and he's committed to throwing you. Whether you can take your chemi or not, he's throwing you. So when this happens, he's allowing you to throw him. He's allowing you to perfect your technique. But at the same time, he still has to be safe to be able to take the ukemi to get back up and do it again. You know, you do it. I can't do this for real on anyone. Okay? That's within a dojo setting, a learning environment. Because the chances of being seriously hurt are very high. And this is what I mean by that. Me allowing, or him allowing me to be able to do this to where I take him by the neck, that gives him the ability to escape, take the fall, and get back up. Do I create the big dramatic fall? I'm 50-50 with him. Because I'm coming through with this. Rod's mentality is, let the technique happen. Respond as the technique happens. If he goes too soon and takes Ukemi, it's not good. If he's late, it's even worse. Because now he's getting fucking nailed right in his neck. And, he's, and you felt that numerous times, being late. It's all about timing, being able to absorb, absorb that and take the ukemi. So this, I, so this allows this right there to be able to take that ukemi. He allows me to throw him. Okay? Now the reality. Here we go with this. The reality. If this is real world and somebody goes to shove and he does not allow this, he tucks his chin. This is coming up on this angle. Hey, right? push, pull back. This is coming up on this angle. This comes right across his face as you push this. Now he's still absorbing this as he goes down. Think of what this would be like if he didn't know how to do that. Think about the guy on the street that has no fucking clue whatsoever, okay? What kind of Under Armour underwear am I wearing right now? Do you guys fucking know? No, you don't, because you have no idea. So how would you know what's coming if you don't know what that person knows and what he's about to be able to do, or what he can do? So the reality is that when this had it, that pop, don't set up, just pop. As that pop happens, you here, you go right across the face. He doesn't take you Kemi. Don't take your camera. Right? And I smash him across the face. Guess what? He's going to fall back. And he's taking that shot right in his face. What type of damage can that do? You can break somebody's nose. You can knock teeth out of their mouth. You can fuck somebody up. Severely with this. And especially with the fact that you're using the eye, you know, you're using hand deflections. So that's another question I have. Why isn't the traditional Aikido people using these sword hand deflections from an empty hand perspective when this art is based off of sword culture and these hand deflections are based off of sword. They're based off of Kenjutsu. Why isn't this being implemented into Aikido training? Because a lot of people look at me, especially these Aikikai people, you know, this guy, you know, Lenny's doing this, Lenny's doing that. What do you think I'm, what do you think I'm trying to corrupt Osensei's philosophy and corrupt Osensei's Aikido? No, I'm not. But I think a lot of people think that I am doing that. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm following in the footsteps of Steven Seagal's methodology of Aikido and I am showing the real fighting techniques on how Aikido can be used in the real world. And the mindset that I have that I teach all of my students, it's not about the trained fighter. It's the asshole on the street that has no idea what you know, that is why we practice so much basics on hand deflections. We're constantly perfecting hand deflections. We're constantly working in that with every technique. And why? Because the hand deflection is your first line of defense. 
whether you get a technique off or not, it's your first line of defense. So if he was to shove again, right, deflection, strike, see, not even full, I didn't even have it completely. Here, now it's right there. I'm moving, I'm eating me in this as I do that. Okay, other side. As this happens, okay, strong, strong. Good, 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 good. Oh, that's even better, right? Okay. You okay? Okay, okay. So again, it's coming. So you tell me, could you have stopped that? Even though I'm doing it and he knows it's coming, but he doesn't know when it's coming. So you tell me, can somebody on the street actually stop that? If you think so, you got fucking issues. <laughs> okay, sorry. But if you really think that, then you're pretty fucking stupid. Because it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry here. When that happens, there's no way you can stop that. No way. Unless you do it like this. Here, and this is out there. Push, pull back. You gotta think reality of, fuck you dude. It's not here and then the hand stay there. So if that was the case, and I did this and I came out, see now it can get stopped. Because I'm coming wide. This isn't WWE. So if I continue to do that, here, he can stop that, okay? Stop it. I'm already inside him. He can't stop it. Booby <laughs> shimmy. He can't stop it, okay? So this even works off of a straight punch. So if he threw that punch right from there, you have this right there, faster punch. Faster, 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 faster. I'm already inside. I'm already inside. Hey. Okay. It's already there. If you do two punch combo, this is hard to do. Okay, now, Rod's a fourth Q. <laughs> okay? He's a fourth Q in Aikido. He's not a showdown. This guy takes better ukemi than 80% of you guys out there. Why? It's because this Aikido is very direct, it's very severe, it's straight to the point. So he throws that one two combination and we'll go slow. How do you work against this? Right? One, two. Right? Again. One, two. Faster. Faster, faster, faster. See, I'm already there. I'm already there. One thing I want to point out is that somebody, well, that's, oh, nobody throws this punch out there. Nobody sits there and does this. Really? <laughs> Why don't you go watch some Conor McGregor fights? He does it all the fucking time. Yes. Conor McGregor does this all the time. He does this all the time. Leaning in, throwing punches like that. Oh, did I say Conor McGregor? Isn't he a UFC fighter? As a matter of fact, Conor McGregor is the richest UFC. It's not real then, right? Oh, wait a minute. It's a UFC guy doing it, so it's okay. But if it's an Aikido guy doing it, that's bullshit. But Conor McGregor does it all the fucking time. You don't believe me? Go pull up some videos on YouTube of Conor McGregor's fights and watch. Yeah, he's not doing this. He's here, this hand's always cocked low and he's doing this. And leaving that hand out there. So do your homework, it's there, it's real. So if you think that this isn't real, for all you MMA butt lovers out there, Okay, your boy Conor McGregor does it all the time. So that straight jab, okay, jab. just jab, straight jab, right? You have that. I'm right there. Again, faster. Faster. Make contact. Hit me. Go ahead. Hit, hit me. Right? It's right there. It's right there. One more time. If I do it again, and he's thinking boxing, Right, and he has that chin, that chin tuck, you know, boom, I'm coming right across his face. That is a bad day. That's a bad day. So you tell me, you think you can stand up to something like that? 
Because I'll tell you what, I sure as hell wouldn't want to feel it. It's another reason why I can't do it to him seriously. You know, my whole journey with Aikido is not to be against the Aikido masses, because that's not what I'm about. It's to show the real fighting techniques of what can be done on the street with a street assault. That's what I'm about, okay? You don't think this stuff works? That's your problem. I don't need to worry about that. I know what I can do. I know what stuff works. Plain and simple. Plain and simple, okay? Maybe instead of everybody always watching part of the video and then bitching up a storm, why don't you just listen to what's being taught? See what's being taught. Go and apply what's being taught. Give it a shot. See if it works for you. The Aikikai, the, you know, the Aikido community out there, stop bashing so much on Seagal. Seriously, stop bashing. You know, okay? It's, I, I don't get why so many people are so just hell-bent on calling Seagal out and making them, you know, you're, you're an asshole, you're a piece of shit, you've done this. You, who fucking cares? You really think Seagal gives a shit about your opinion? Okay? Every one of us here probably knows somebody that is extremely wealthy. Do you think they give a fuck about your opinion? You, in their mind, you are beneath them. They shit on you all day long. You wanna know why? Because tomorrow, they don't have to go to work if they don't want to. But the majority of us has to, we have to. We have to make a living. These guys are already wealthy. Seagal can disappear and never be in another movie ever again. He can disappear off the face of the earth with Aikido and never do anything ever again. And you wanna know what? It's not gonna dent his bank account one bit. He can go anywhere he wants in the whole entire world. And you know what? Do you think he gives a shit what a, what a bunch of people think about him? Because he has millions of people that love him and that love what he's done for Aikido. And Rod brought this up. Let's think about this for a quick second here. What has Seagal done for Aikido versus what everybody else has done for Aikido in the world? Okay, There are hundreds and thousands of people that practice Aikido today because Steven Seagal. Because of above the law, mark for death, hard to kill. They all got involved with Aikido because of that. I did. Roy Dean said that he did. Okay? There's a lot of other people that have gotten involved with Aikido because of what Steven Seagal did in his earlier days of being a movie star, okay? So let's talk about how many people know who, I, who Steven Seagal is. Steven Seagal, hands down, is the most famous Aikido shihan that has ever lived. He's more famous than Morihei Ueshiba. Whether you like it or not, the whole world knows who Steven Seagal is. How many non-Aikido people know who Morihei Ueshiba is? Not as many as that know who Steven Seagal is. You know, how many of you knew who Christian Tissier was before you ever started training in Aikido? I know I didn't. How many of you knew who Satomi Sensei was before you started training in Aikido? I know I didn't. I knew who Satomi Sensei was because I started training in Chicago Aikikai and Chicago Aikikai is a direct affiliate dojo of ASU and that is Satomi Sensei's organization. I found out who he was real quick, but did I know about him before I started Aikido? No. Did I know who Steven Seagal was before I started Aikido? Yes. Did I know who Yamada Sensei was, Chiba, Kunai, um, Saito Sensei, uh, Yamaguchi Sensei, Suganu Sensei, Nichio Sensei, um, Isoyama Sensei, Abe Sensei, did I, knew any, did I know who any of those people were before I started Aikido? No, I didn't. I did know who Bill Sosa Sensei was before I started Aikido because that was the first Aikido book that I ever got after I saw Above the Law with Steven Seagal. Okay? So, how many of you guys out there knew who Steven Seagal was and knew that is the Aikido that you wanted to learn but you fell into the, the, <clears throat> the brainwash pit of traditional Aikido because you went and started training at a traditional school thinking that the Aikido that you saw in Above the Law was the same stuff that you were gonna learn at, at other Aikido dojos, right? I know I did. Guilty, 
Right here. My, my name is Lenny Sly and I'm an Aikido addict. You know, it's, he got me hooked on Aikido. I can talk about these things because I'm qualified to talk about these things, okay? My Shodan came from Misugi Satomi Sensei. Misugi Satomi Sensei was the last Uchi Deshi of O Sensei, okay? My Nidan came from Larry Reynosa Sensei, who was Steven Seagal's highest ranked student. So I can talk about Seagal Sensei's Aikido. I've also trained with Matsuoka Sensei, okay? George Angulo Sensei has been probably the longest sensei I've had. That's where I've got my Sandan and my Yondan from, was from George Angulo Sensei. And, then, and if any of you want to contest that, he's located in Miami, Florida. Look him up. He will glad you, gladly set you straight about my ability and about my rank, okay? So more than half of my Aikido training and my Aikido years in Aikido have been studying Seagal Sensei's methodology of Aikido. But I did spend several years, several, 16, with traditional. But I was also doing tension at the same time towards the, the latter end of my traditional Aikido. So I know both sides. I've been on both sides of the fence where the majority of you are stuck on one side of the fence because you don't want to hop over to the other side of the fence. I'm not saying that my Aikido is better than all of yours, but I've experienced your Aikido not for like six weeks. We're talking 16 years. Okay? Huge difference. I've experienced that and I've also experienced this. I've also experienced Seagal Sensei's method, methodology of Aikido, which is, which he likes to say, there's not that much of a difference to actually claim it a style or say that it's much different than what everyone else is doing. Well, this is where I disagree with Seagal Sensei because I can probably come up with 60 things off the top of my head that completely are different than what's done with traditional Aikido, okay? Maybe I'll do a video on that and I'll show all of those and I'll talk about those as well. But that's gonna be later on down the road. So instead of being against what I'm offering and what I'm showing, because I'm not saying that mine is better than yours, okay? Because I don't really care. We could all learn from one another. We could all grow from one another, okay? Everybody's divided. Oh, my system's better. No, my system's better. No, my system, who gives a shit whose system is better, okay? Who cares? What I'm doing is I'm trying to bring everybody together to see what works in the real world. Now, granted, there's a lot of people out there that don't want to learn how to use this effectively on the street. They like the philosophy, they, they like the spiritual side of it. God bless you, keep doing it, okay? But if you ever get in that situation, you get your ass handed to you and you're a third down, or fourth down, or fifth down, you're gonna feel real stupid for all the time you know, that you've invested in this that got you nowhere. And if you really still think that you could take somebody in the real world and lightly put them down on the ground without hurting them, you know, I don't know what you're smoking, but send some to me because I'd really like to try that out. Because that's just fucking crazy if you really think you can do that. Especially in today's day and age, no fucking way are you ever gonna be able to do that to somebody on the street for real with that particular style of Aikido. You have to be pretty straightforward, direct, and explosive in order to make it work. Okay? The one thing that I do have over all of you guys is the hand deflections. And the funny thing is, Seagal Sensei is the one that invented these hand deflections okay, off of Kenjutsu. And considering that Aikido, again, comes from sword culture, it's based off the sword, why isn't there any empty hand, sword, hand deflections with these attacks? Why are they not being done? And some of you are gonna say, we do them, we do them, we do them. Okay, I've seen those people that have done them. And quite frankly, it's, it's done horribly. Because with an honest attack, that sword deflection is going to collapse. Okay? That's what I have to offer. Any of you guys wanna come out and train with me? Please, come on out and train with me, okay? I'm about everybody coming together and everybody growing, okay? I'm, I'm getting past the point of, you know, everybody goes, oh, Lenny's angry. I'm not angry, I'm just very passionate about this. But what I do get upset about is how stupid some of you people are. 
and how ignorant some of you people are and how full of yourselves you think you all are because you think your Aikido is the be all end all and you think that you're so fucking superior when you're really not. And yeah, do I come across that way? I'm sure that I do. But you know what? That's not, that's not really how I am. You guys just take it that way. It's my passion that is screaming to all of you. This needs to grow, it needs to change. If you wanna continue doing what you're doing, that's, that's clearly up to you, okay? God bless you, that's clearly up to you. But if you wanna see change and you want to take Aikido back, and I'm not saying take it back like some of these fucking idiots are saying, oh, we're well, used to grading Aikido. I'm not degrading Aikido, I'm taking it back to the point of where it's supposed to grow, okay? Get back to the martial side of Aikido. Make it work for you, make it effective. Because if it's not working for you and you can't make it work and you cannot make it effective, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Because God forbid you ever get attacked in the real world, you're gonna fucking hate yourself. Because when you get your ass kicked by some guy out there that knows how to street fight and you can't defend yourself, you're gonna wish to God you took this martial art a hell of a lot more seriously, okay? And this is the other thing that I do with my students, is I teach them how these things work. And I implement the mindset into this. And I go into detail. Like I said in the last video, that is part of the problem, is that these senses are not teaching technique verbally. They're not explaining how things work. And part of the reason why they do that is, I learned it the hard way, you're all gonna learn it the hard way. Fuck that. So you go to a dojo that has 50 people in the dojo and you got three guys that are beyond exceptional, but the rest of the dojo is mediocre or borderline horrible. How do you build a legacy off of that? Okay. I'm not training my students to become black belts. I'm training my students to become teachers because that is how my legacy grows. Because when I have students that can teach this, that preserves my legacy. My legacy continues to go on for years and years to come. That's what all of these senseis should be doing. Because if you think about it, if you had a sensei out there that was as passionate as I was, that taught these things verbally and showed everybody why and how it worked, all of your students would be better. The students reflect the teacher. So if the students suck, what does that say about the teacher? Oh, it says that the students can't pick up what the teacher's doing because it's all about feeling. Yeah, but you know what? This isn't the 70s anymore. This ain't the fucking hippie era anymore. Okay? This is serious. It's no longer we got to prepare for this. The problem is here now. You know? Violence is at an all-time high. You never know when you're going to walk out of your house and you can, you can get attacked at any time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are. It just... All that really matters is you being in the wrong place at the wrong time and you can find yourself in the middle of something really bad, okay? Do you want that to happen? No, you don't. So change the way out you're training. Change the mindset. And for the senses out there, think about what I'm saying. Share your knowledge with your students. Tell them how these things work. Show them how and why they work. Just because you were taught through feeling and through visual learning doesn't mean that you have to follow in your sensei's tradition. Break the tradition, because that is how you're gonna keep people in your dojo. You teach people how to do it, why and how to do it, these people will be loyal to you forever, because they're learning. That also explains why a lot of people leave, because when they're not learning something, they get frustrated and they leave, and then they go somewhere else. And then they enjoy that other martial art, like BJJ, because those people are giving away the knowledge. They're teaching you how it's done, why it's done, what makes it work, okay? That's why Aikido's failing in that sense. I remember when Aikido was huge and there were dojos that had tons of students in it. That was 15 years, easily 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Why is it declined? The senseis are not doing their job, teaching their students, preparing them for the real world and preparing them to become teachers. There's some people out there that don't want to become teachers,
but there's other people out there that aspire to become teacher teachers and you have to find out who those people are those are the people that are going to make you a legend within that dojo your legacy will continue on from that okay isn't that what old sensei did yamada sensei satomi chiba kunai saito tohei okay koichi tohei not Akira Tohei, okay. Koichi Tohei, right? Isoyama Sensei, Abe Sensei, isn't that what he did? All those guys are phenomenal teachers. They were all phenomenal. What did Sensei do? What did O Sensei do? He created master instructors. These guys are phenomenal. But how well did they do articulating those teachings to everyone else. They didn't. They just didn't. Food for thought. That's it. I'm out. If you like the video, hit a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, good for you. I don't fucking care. Leave a comment down below if you'd like. Okay? Don't ask stupid questions. Oh, this is where you get to train martial artists. You know, I'm just going to fucking delete the comment. I'm just not going to answer. Okay? I'll respond to people that have legitimate comments and that are sincere about their comments, no problem. Okay? Share the video. Subscribe. Because there's going to be more of this. Not so much more of this, where a lot of talking. But there's going to be a lot more showing the truth on how Aikido works and more realistic application. Okay? But again, you have to understand the kata. You have to understand how this works before you could actually make it work. And you have to have that mindset of real world. You can't be caught in the fantasy land of two trained fighters fighting each other. Okay? Can't get caught in that. Because that's sport fighting. That's completely different. That's nothing. That has nothing to do with real world. So, subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get a notification next time to put up a video. Check out our website, RoadWarriorsTrainingTC.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.